Who would win if Sasuke were to fight Neji? For this, I'll really only be looking at part one of the series since Neji is barely relevant during Shippuden and doesn't do much of anything until his uh, death in the war arc. This is a matchup most people agree would have been really cool to see, especially due to all the parallels between Sasuke and Neji who both use dojutsu and are lauded as geniuses in their generation, hailing from two of the most prominent clans in the Leaf Village. It's a real shame we never got to see this fight go down within the series, but I hope this will explain how it would turn out if the fight did end up happening. I'll primarily be using information from the manga, data books, and fan books to sort this out, but I'll also be including some from anime materials like the anime profile guides, as they include a lot of useful information about this part of the series. For this video, I'll start at the very beginning of the series, and we'll work our way down to the final valley during the Sasuke retrieval arc, just to see how this fight would go. But before we get into it, obviously, if you like versus battles, like the video, and subscribe. I have tons of other ones on the channel that you can watch after this one. But let's get started with pre-exam Sasuke versus pre-exam Neji. Even early on, Sasuke was very talented compared to his other contemporaries. During his debut, his identity as one of the last surviving members of the formerly strongest clan in the Leaf Village, the Uchiha clan, is the first thing told to us about Sasuke, and this has even set high expectations with Kakashi. Sasuke then was skilled enough to press Kakashi and force him to put away his book unlike Naruto and Sakura, who were easily dealt with while Sasuke had the senses to hang back and observe how Kakashi fought. Sasuke then goes on to hone these skills along with others related to chakra control taught to him by Kakashi during Team 7's first mission to the Land of Waves. Sasuke doesn't do too much during this arc, but he does have a few impressive showings that help highlight how talented he was at this point, like easily defeating the Demon Brothers, Tu Chuni, which goes to show while Sasuke held the rank of a Ginin, he was far beyond this level in true power. He also went on to press Haku alongside Naruto early during their encounter. However, it's heavily implied that Haku held back during this part of the fight, so ultimately, this doesn't mean much as far as strength, but it should still speak to his skill as a shinobi. Sasuke also displayed many advanced skills for a Ginin at this point, with Kakashi even being astonished by not only his intelligence and skills in Taijutsu, but also his capabilities with Firestyle. At this point, Sasuke was already very skilled in the use of many powerful fire style techniques, which is uncharacteristic of a Ginin. He is very adept in the use of fireball jutsu, which he mastered at a young age, and when he used it during the bell test, it was powerful enough to make a crater in the ground. Sasuke can also use smaller scale techniques like Phoenix Flower Jutsu, where he can shoot numerous smaller fireballs that he can even conceal with weapons like Shuriken or the Dragon Flame Jutsu which can travel up instruments like wires after Sasuke uses them to restrain the target. Sasuke, like other members of the Uchiha clan, had also awakened the Sharingan by this point, albeit it wasn't fully matured yet like Kakashi's or Itachi's, so he couldn't yet use its basic abilities to the same degree as the first data book even implies. However, the Sharingan still grants Sasuke the basic ability to analyze and copy any technique in front of him, whether it be Ninjutsu, Genjutsu, or Taijutsu while also enhancing the speed he moves at. Also, despite how skilled Sasuke already was at this stage, his fighting style still had its weaknesses. As Kakashi says and demonstrates during the bell test, Sasuke's usage of ninjutsu leaves him open and vulnerable to sneak attacks, mainly due to his inexperience as a shinobi. So even at later stages, Sasuke has to be careful if he resorts to his fire style. The Sharingan, while a useful tool, also has its downsides, which were highlighted in the next arc, when Sasuke went up against Rock Lee, which brings us to our next subject, how Sasuke compared to other Ginny like Lee and Neji at this specific point. Moving on to the tuning exams, which is the next time we see Sasuke fight, Sakura implies he may be stronger than ever before with his Sharingan. However, that didn't help him one bit against Rock Lee. Lee, without even taking his weights off or using any of the gates, easily takes the upper hand against Sasuke and starts beating him up and would have done him incredibly dirty if Guy hadn't arrived earlier and prevented Lee from using the Hidden Lotus. While Sasuke's Sharingan allowed him to see and copy Lee's moves, he still wasn't fast enough to move in response to him at this stage, as Lee himself noted. And then this encounter highlights one of the Sharingan's biggest weaknesses, that while its user may be able to analyze something with it, if they aren't fast enough to move accordingly, then the Sharingan is of literally no help. 
This also doesn't speak too well to how this version of Sasuke would perform in a fight against Neji, which brings us to our next point of how strong Neji is. Like Sasuke, Neji was a prodigious member of a highly talented clan, and while his upbringing may not have been as tragic or as lonely as Sasuke's, he was just as motivated to become as strong as he could in order to defy the destiny he thought was laid before him, even if he didn't realize it yet. Neji was acknowledged early on as being one of the strongest Ginning of the Leaf Village, going into the tuning exams with multiple anime guides and Lee himself even expressing clear inferiority to Neji at multiple points at this stage. So it would be pretty fair to say Neji would have beaten Sasuke pretty easily at this point since he should be far superior to weighted Lee who literally just clowned Sasuke. However, Neji does still have his limits at this stage when it comes to speed specifically. Lee is implied to exceed Neji in how fast he can move and attack based on Guy's statements, their literal teacher, as well as the volume extra citing weightless Lee had completely unrivaled speed, among the Guinean anyway. And he would presumably grow even faster when using the eight gates, which are stated to drastically increase the speed and strength of the user. Interestingly enough, it is heavily implied within the manga that when opening the fifth gate, Lee becomes fast enough to defeat Neji, with Guy citing this as the key to beating Neji, and the anniversary guide regarding the Hidden Lotus as having speed that surpasses Neji's gentle fist. While the official viz omits any specific mention of Neji, the English fan translation and the actual Japanese manga do, which means the viz is a mistranslation here. However, you can still interpret Guy's statement as being about defeating Neji. However, while Lee moves and attacks faster than Neji without his weights, based on the nature of the statements, he should still be able to keep up with him until he uses the fifth gate. Neji is also incredibly skilled for a Ginning, and even early on he was capable of using most of his clan's famous techniques. One reason for Neji's skill and the cornerstone of his entire fighting style was the Byakugan. One of the great three ocular powers like the Sharingan and Rinnegan. With his Byakugan, Neji can see across vast distances in all directions, barring a minute blind spot on the back of his neck, and can even see through solid objects and obstructions like barriers or walls. The perceptive abilities of the Byakugan even go beyond that of the Sharingan, at least according to Kakashi, allowing the user to see an enemy's chakra network, which makes the Hyuga clan's signature move possible, the Gentle Fist. With the Gentle Fist, Neji and other users of the style aim to defeat their opponents through using the chakra lace palm strikes to direct attacks at the enemy's chakra networks and vital organs. And this is so effective that he can completely bypass an enemy's durability. Because like Kakashi notes, it is completely impossible to strengthen your own organs. So if Neji puts his hands on Sasuke, it doesn't matter how tanky Sasuke is, how much he can endure, he's getting roughed up. Neji can also apply the gentle fist in more creative ways with more advanced techniques like the heavenly rotation where he uses the gentle fist and the chakra emitted from his body to spin creating a defensive barrier that applies the principles of the gentle fist to deflect almost any attack. He also notes during his fight with Kitamaru that when using this he can emit chakra from his entire body as well as his palms. This technique is also so advanced that Neji's uncle, Hiyashi, the literal head of the Hyuga clan, believes that his mastery in it at such a young age was enough to say that he had completely surpassed the main branch of the clan entirely in skill. According to Tenten though, Neji's most fearsome ability is the 8 trigrams palms, which allows him to target an enemy's chakra points, shutting down their chakra network, and causing them to collapse after being rendered completely unable to use any techniques. This certainly would be a way for Neji to beat Sasuke, however, like Naruto who forced his chakra points open through using Kurama's chakra, Sasuke also has an answer to this, which brings us back to Sasuke's progression and his newest ability he had acquired shortly after the start of the tuning exams, the Curse Seal of Heaven. After being given the Curse Seal of Heaven by Orochimaru during the Forest of Death, Sasuke awakened a frightening new power. After being granted with terrifying strength, and allowing his chakra to run wild, according to the fan books in Dosu, Sasuke made quick work of and completely outclassed and scared away Dosu and Zaku, who easily handled weighted Lee shortly before this. While this alone would show the curse mark even back then took Sasuke to a greater level of power, 
than when he lost to Lee, there are other implications that relate directly to Neji. In fact, Neji was planning on fighting the Sound Genin himself to avenge Lee before sensing Sasuke's dark presence and declaring he wouldn't need to get involved. After watching what Sasuke did to them, he was astonished saying he never knew the Uchiha clan were so strong. So while it's not concrete either way, Sasuke's ability to impress Neji at this stage says a lot. While the curse seal completely drains Sasuke after it wears off, it still provides a huge boost in his chakra when in use based on the examples I just cited, and Dosu even noting as much. Which means while Neji probably could and would defeat Sasuke at this stage even quicker than Lee did, Sasuke can come back with his curse mark, then the result becomes a lot less clear. But what we can say is if he doesn't defeat Neji with a few attacks, Neji would probably outlast him and then Sasuke would just be on the floor again. However, this all changes once we get towards the end of the tuning exams. After going and training with Kakashi for a month after the forest of death and preliminaries, Sasuke returns much stronger than before with a few new tricks up his sleeve and a much cooler outfit. Sasuke, while arriving fashionably late, was hyped to no end by almost every god with the anime profiles referring to Sasuke as the strongest of the leaf, of the Ginning anyway. And here is in noting he displays much more skill than his peers in the areas of ninjutsu and taijutsu. This alone would be enough for some people to say Sasuke would defeat Neji, however, we get even more from this fight with Gara. A few important factors going into that fight that a lot of people either like to get twisted or disregard was the brief relationship between Sasuke and Gara as opponents. Gara was spooked after setting eyes on Sasuke, with Tamari and Kankuro noting that they've never seen Gara this worried before, and the second data book using this to say Sasuke was Gara's strongest opponent yet. This also happens to be the main point of contention when it comes to Sasuke vs Lee and other participants in the exam, whether or not it's talking about literal raw power or overall strength and speed, and there's not a lot to suggest the latter. For one, Gara was stronger during his fight with Sasuke than he was against Rock Lee, and this is due to the fact that Gara and his sand grow stronger any time he kills people or takes in blood according to Gara himself. And if you watch my channel, you should already know this is consistent with information we know about Shinobi growing stronger from fighting as well as training, which ultimately casts Sasuke's performance against Gara in an even better light than Lee's. Sasuke also got progressively faster, even in base as the fight continued, starting out around the level of base Lee with his weights according to Guy, and then moving faster and being compared to weightless Lee by Guy and Rock Lee himself, before continuing to move even faster than Lee, which Lee remarks that Sasuke has truly gained a high speed body like his, which implies that he should be faster than Neji, at least when he's using the Chidori because that's what Lee is referring to. Once he works his way up to these speeds, it's important to note that if his showing against Gaara are of any use, he starts off much slower than this, and until he reaches his max speed, Neji wouldn't have literally any problems keeping up with Sasuke. However, this is where Sasuke's abilities comes in. Sasuke possesses the Sharingan on top of this, which Lee even notes further enhances his speed when used and he even believes that with the 5th gate, he wouldn't be able to evade the attacks like Gaara's sand that Sasuke can. And this allows Sasuke to spring into a direct assault unlike Lee. Additionally, Sasuke also mastered a new technique, the Chidori, which focuses on condensing lightning style chakra into the user's hand in order to create a fast head-on stabbing attack typically used for assassinations, which is why it's typically regarded by shinobi like Mike Guy as being similarly dangerous to the Eight Gates. The Chidori also greatly enhances Sasuke's speed even further and made him powerful enough to injure Gara to the point where he resorted to transforming into Shikaku. The technique should also be capable of dealing with Neji's rotation, similarly to how Naruto did with the Kunai, especially since it overpowered Gara's sand, which has been directly compared to Neji's rotation as a defense. So since Sasuke approaches and reaches Lee's level of speed and base, then exceeds it with the Sharingan and Chidori, while it's still possible for Neji to win, It'd be a lot harder to argue he does, and there's absolutely nothing he could do to stop a Chidori from Sasuke. This brings us to the next and last part of the video, how it would go down at the end of part 1, and how the outcome changes again, and spoiler, things don't get any better for Neji. After leaving the village with the Sound 4 and undergoing the stabilization of his curse seal, Sasuke gains even greater strength 
And while a lot of people like to throw around a lot of vague statements that don't go anywhere concerning Drunk Lee, Sick Kimimaru, or Gara, we still have enough to tell us how badly Neji would lose if confronted Sasuke at the Final Valley instead of Naruto. For one, we're not told anything about Neji's progression between the end of the exams at this point, so it's not really clear if he grew significantly stronger compared to before when he would have most likely lost to a weaker Sasuke with his Chidori and Sharingan. His fight with Kitomaru isn't of any help either, since while Kitomaru fought him in a range and he still pressed and overwhelmed and nearly killed Neji in Curse Mark 2 after discovering his blind spot, so this still speaks to Neji's overall capabilities as a fighter. While Sasuke lost to Sakon and Yukon before leaving the village, they are stated to be the stronger members of the Sound 4 alongside Tayuya, whereas Jirobo and Kitomaru are considered the weakest members by Tayuya, Kabuto, and Orochimaru. The Sound 4 are also incredibly weak compared to Jonin like Kakashi even as a unit, with Kitomaru himself admitting as much before they all needed Curse Mark 2 to high diff two weaker Jonin who were exhausted and just returned to the village from a mission. Upon completing the stabilization of his curse seal, Sasuke was compared to Kimimaru who is said to be and portrayed as leagues above the rest of the Sound 4. However, it gets even worse once we look at how Sasuke compares to the Naruto he fought. After he stopped toying around and fully developed his Sharingan, Sasuke was fast and strong enough to effortlessly pummel KM0 Naruto. His Sharingan also became much more developed here and capable, now able to effortlessly predict the movements of his opponents. He even says he can now conserve chakra and line up his attacks based on where the enemy will appear and became so much stronger that he initially mistook the boost for the curse mark. This has some pretty serious implications since the second data book confirms that Naruto was the strongest he'd ever been after releasing Kurama's chakra against Sasuke in the final valley saying he'd unleashed his ultimate or utmost strength so far. While this would not only imply Sasuke even without the curse mark at this stage would be superior to the Naruto that fought on par with and defeated Neji, but also the KM0 Naruto who was implied to be stronger than Kakashi and Zabuza in sheer power in the land of waves and stronger than Haku who was superior to both of them. This means Sasuke would reach these Jonin levels even without the curse seal and should be able to easily defeat Neji who has struggled with or lost to several weaker opponents. And this is consistent as well, considering Sasuke after this fight goes on to scare Kabuto just by flaring up his chakra, and Kabuto is noted as Kakashi level. Sasuke obviously also grows much stronger when using the curse seal, especially the second stage. Even weaker curse seals like the ones bestowed upon the Sound 4 can grant the user 10 times as much strength and chakra than before when the second stage is used. However, it should be noted this transformation doesn't last too long and heavily drains the user to the point where it can kill them if it's overused. However, Sasuke wouldn't even need it in this fight as I already said before. If he uses it, Neji immediately loses. There's no hope for him here. Sasuke's techniques also get much stronger in this form, like the Black Chidori which was powerful enough to match Naruto's Vermilion Rasengan which was enhanced heavily by Kurama's Chakra and he gains two large hand-like appendages which he can use his wings to fly or shield himself from attacks. Sasuke in this form was also much stronger than before, implying he'd exceeded KM1 Naruto or One-Tailed Naruto, remarking he'd become more special than even him before easily deflecting his track with a wing and then going on to clash evenly with Naruto in one of the most iconic panels of the entire series which was described as the manga and data books as being the ultimate or largest scale battle between Genin at the time. It's also important to note that while the fight ended in a clash, it has always been characterized as a Sasuke W due to the fact that Naruto lost consciousness and went down before he did. And as Naruto says himself during the reunion, he was completely at Sasuke's mercy after that. So once we start talking about anything after the tuning exams, there's just no hope for Neji to beat any form of Sasuke, let alone Curse Mark 2 Sasuke that defeated KM1 Naruto in the Final Valley. But that's it for this video. Obviously, if you liked it, leave a like on it. Um, subscribe if you liked it as well. If you think Neji wins, let me know why. Why you think Neji can beat Curse Mark 2 Sasuke. But other than that, have a nice day.